favorite time of the day that sun's just starting to peak up above the horizon. Basically what we're doing here, there's an offshore hump with a bunch of tall weeds on it. We came out here yesterday and found a few big fish on here. So we thought, well, we'll come out here today and kind of expand on this pattern. But what a treat to come over here. We're in Alexandria, Minnesota. Sting was Airwood Resort. Yeah. So it's, a, it's the annual Crestliner dealer meeting. And so they've got all the boats here. We've got John Cox up here from Florida, which I don't get to do a lot of bass fishing, but if you're a bass fishing fanatic, you know who this hammer is. I mean, one of the top, <laughs> he's gonna blush now because he's a very humble, unassuming yeah. man, but just a phenomenal hammer. Just a great tournament angler. One of the hottest bass fishermen in probably in the last five, six, seven years. I mean, just had a really impressive career. And so every once in a while I get to run into this guy and every once in a while I get to fish with him. And so we're in his boat. What a treat. Beautiful morning. We're on a spot where we know there's big fish. I'm gonna try a spinner bait here right away here to see if we can pick off a few aggressive fish here. We don't even have the depth finder turned on yet here. <laughs> <laughs> We're both excited to get I in know. the water. <laughs> There we go. There we go. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. First one of the morning. Oh my gosh. We just barely missed the spot. That's how crazy. How yeah. close you got to get right where they're like right That's in that one nice area. Fish. Yeah, look at that. I mean, he came up and smoked it. All right. Nice work. Oh. Yeah, there's places on this hump where these weeds get a lot taller. Yeah. All right. First one's the hardest one, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, they're so healthy. Boy, you know, the conditions out here are perfect. The one just blew up right there, <laughs> but they're so perfect. It's so calm. There's there's a bunch of bluegill. What else? There's some there's some other kind of bait fish out here. It's like shiners or something. Yeah, just some surfacing. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, and we're out in the middle, the dead middle of this lake, uh, which I'm not used to, but it's a little high spot and you can see some of the grass. And uh, man, I think we're gonna catch some more right here. It looks so good. You know, I guess it's what you call that early fall time frame in you know, water temperatures are still high 60s, and it's just, it feels like some of the nice fall, summerish weather of the year, you know, before it gets cold. And, and, you know, we tried a lot of different things, you know, we didn't really know where the fish would be or how they'd be set up. And, you know, we went back into some shallow lakes, we went, found some dirty water in some lakes, we, you know, we fished a few docks, we fished some shorelines, we fished some lily pads. You know, we tried a lot of different things, but ultimately, where, where we saw the most fish and, you know, and the nicest fish are basically just these offshore, offshore structure with weeds where you know, these humps might come up to maybe five, 10 feet of water, tall weeds on the hump. And next to the tall weeds, it's really fast access to deep water. And so it seemed like that deep water next to weeds was kind of the pattern. And once we you know, figured that out and put our heads down on those spots, you know, we started catching a lot of fish, but it's funny, you know, the first night we get in and we run up and down the lake, we went from one end of the chain to the other. I mean, just fished all kinds of different water. And probably one of the first spots, second spots we hit, you know, is probably the best spot that we found, you know. And so, but we, you know, obviously we had to check everything out. And, you know, every time you look at the map and all oh, this next lake up looks even better, you know. You know, but that's part of the exploration that to me is just so much fun is it's just fun going to do water and trying to figure it out and find fish. That one scared me to death. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. that's oh a nice gosh, fish. that's a nice one. That's a nice Oh fish. gosh, he's only got the back hook. Nice. Oh my gosh. Come one here. more and I'm switching oh. to a top water. Man, that was so <laughs> awesome. Boy, he inhaled that thing. Oh. When you can hear that boiling. Boom. That, yeah, that was that's good stuff. That was such a vicious strike. I mean, we got all the right ingredients here. We got the birds, you know, we're out in this hump out in yeah, the middle of the fish, lake. There's some bait fish just kind of <laughs> dimpling on the surface. Oh, yeah, that was so cool. That was cool. The top water, uh, it's just forever, you know, and the visual strikes is just, that's, I love seeing a fish come up and eat a top water. Uh, you know, it's what wakes me up in my sleep at night sometimes, you know, seeing that, you know, that fish either come up and get it and miss it or catch that fish and, uh, Man, it's just, it's exciting. It's just something that I feel like I can throw all day long. And you know, sometimes it works out and sometimes, you know, I catch a few in the morning and then I don't catch anything the rest of the day, but I keep it in my hand. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, a, my, it's one of my favorite techniques for sure. Yeah, the last couple of times I've been up here, I've really considered 
uh, you know, in summer it gets so miserable in Florida. <laughs> this is a place I want to move to. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice place to be. Oh, There's got him. Yep. Oh, gosh. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Nice. Come on up here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, man, that's a nice one. That is a nice fish. <laughs> right up on top of that flat where you'd expect a fish to be right away in the morning, huh? All right, I'll get that in the water. Oh, yeah, that makes a splash. <laughs> That fish he just clubbed it. He hammered it. You know, and it seems like with bass fishing sometimes, especially in the morning, you know, when that, that sun penetration is changing really quickly, you know, as the day progresses, it's like you're just picking up different rods all the time. You know, and so John, you know, he starts out with a top water. I'm throwing a spinner bait. You know, I switched up. I I think I threw a swim bait for a few casts. Then I went to a wacky worm and you know, we're just, just trying different things and you know, just trying to hit different parts of the spot. You know, and just making those little adjustments through the days that sun gets higher, especially, you know, with clear skies, you know, to me, that's really part of the fun of bass fishing. It's just figuring it out as the hours change. Oh, there's a big bass right here. Is there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Got a worm we can drop on him. I'm going to borrow your rod here for a second. Still see him? I don't want to get somewhere over here. I'm gonna maybe try a wacky yeah, worm. I here. just picked it up. Did you? <laughs> I, just picked, I just grabbed your rod. The handle's probably on the wrong side. It is on it. the other side. That's We're all right. Sabotage you however I can. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling you could catch fish with a Snoopy rod. Uh, <laughs> You're I don't one know. of those kind of guys. This one does feel so weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, I'm going to go back to the top water. It, I'm going to throw funny. that a little bit. Oh, yeah. It, we were both kind of feeling it there for a second. Yeah. There he is. Got him? Yep. Oh, nice. I wonder if that's the one we saw. <laughs> <laughs> this has got an attitude. Yeah. Oh, come here. Well, I don't know if that's telling us something. Second cast with this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Might be a sign. So this week we're at the Crestliner dealer meeting. This is something I really look forward to. You know, we see a lot of the new boats and stuff. Uh, get to see a lot of the dealers. A lot of people I haven't seen in a while and uh, that this might be the only opportunity to see them. And uh, it was just really cool that, you know, I got a hold of Jason and, and we were like, man, let's go fishing. And we got, you know, got this opportunity uh, to go out here on these lakes. And uh, man, I mean, I, I was, as soon as we, uh, you know, set the date that we were gonna get to go fish this week, uh, I mean, I was, I was super excited and uh, I couldn't wait to get out there. There we go. Oh, got him? Yeah, I got him. Oh gosh, <laughs> the better one? Oh, not bad. This is just ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. Boy, that was such a good call going to that worm. You know what? It's like that I think quick. this worm catches fish just about everywhere out here. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think that's a tip, a safe tip you could give is in Minnesota with these weed fish, throwing a wacky worm is pretty tough to beat. There we go. Yeah. Not a big fish, but maybe it's a sign of a pattern. We know there's big fish in here. So we saw a few out here yesterday. And we saw a big fish swimming around in front of the boat here a little bit ago. So we know that they're around. We just got to catch one. You know, what's funny about John is, you know, they've changed rules in professional bass tournaments because of John. You know, where, you know, he was taking these flat bottom aluminum boats and going through box culverts and going up into, you know, going over shallow spots. And I mean, the, the tales and the stories are legendary of what John would do to get to a piece of water that the big fiberglass boats couldn't get into. And he'd win tournaments that way. And what I find interesting is that 
John spends a lot of time fishing shallow. There's times where I've talked to John where he broke the transducer off the back of his boat getting into a shallow spot and this was in February and the transducer is still laying in a splash well in October. He didn't even have a transducer on the boat all year long. Okay, and you know, fishing less than five feet of water. I mean, the guy has cashed a lot of checks fishing in less than five feet of water. And what's interesting is in today's world, you know, you look at how forward facing sonar is changing the game and, and you know, really revolutionized a lot of fishing, you know, especially with smallmouth bass and walleye tournaments. But, you know, here's a guy that zigged instead of zagged, you know. Everybody is offshore, that's the hot trend, using forward facing sonar. And then here's a guy that's fishing in less than five feet of water and, and beating a lot of these people, you know. And so it's kind of a deal where you look at fishing and sometimes you just have to zig when everybody else zags. You just have to find something different that's your own and you can do really well with that with fishing. There we go. Got him. Got him. Oh, oh man. Guys, that was about as far as I could throw. <laughs> <laughs> keep wondering when that topwater thing's gonna dry up on you, I know. You, you keep milking it, riding out. But what is it, kind of the saying that one fish on a topwater is better oh, than he got lost them. five oh. fish on a jig because it's so fun? Oh, I know it. That's yeah. the best part when they hit that thing. Yeah. Oh. I throw a top water a lot when everything tells me, oh, it's not going to work just because it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. Honestly, after that one came up and inhaled it, I'm pretty much doomed the rest of the day. <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think there's just, I think there's a lot more fish grouped up here on the tip of this thing. Oh, there they are. When's, when's the last time you fished where the bank was? <laughs> <laughs> they, honestly, this is the second time this year that I fished where I can't cast and hit the bank. So I, I'm, I'm practicing, I'm working. I mean, to me, if I tell anybody this story when we went fishing, we're, we're, I'm offshore fishing today. Even though we can see the bottom out here, we are nowhere near the bank. <laughs> oh, I think that's great. You're right, I'm gonna call it. Right there. There we go. Oh yeah. Some bait fish dimpling up there. Yeah, I think that's the spot too. I think that's where we. Were. Got him. Got him. Yep. <laughs> Wait, how does that work? I call it, and you catch him. <laughs> Come on. This is a better that's fish. That's a nice one. <laughs> whoa, oh gosh. Oh. Whoa. 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 Get him up out of those weeds. Oh my. Oh, that is a big one. Yeah. Oh no, he just got No. Oh gosh. Golly, that was that a, was a fish really big one. one. <laughs> oh, right on the tip of this point. Oh huh? my gosh. Oh my. That was a big one. That was. Oh, heartbreak. Oh. You know, running a loom boat has given me a lot of uh, advantages over the years. I mean, it, and, it, and one thing I just, I, I love being comfortable when I'm out there. That's my whole thing. Is I like, you know, I fish shallow because I want to be comfortable. Uh, you know, I run, uh, you know, my aluminum boat because I want to be comfortable. And it's kind of what I grew up fishing in, you know, fishing John Boat Clubs and stuff when I was younger. And uh, it's something just familiar. Uh, you know, it's almost like the top water and a lot of the baits I still throw now, uh, you know, or some of the baits I threw growing up, you know, and, it, and just, uh, you know, not much has changed. <laughs> Good fish. Got him. Yep. Oh yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Not as big as that one I just <laughs> no, lost. Not so. as big as that last one. <laughs> I think you figured out something though. Well, yeah. yeah. That top water bite's slowly going away. Fish got my worm. Uh -oh. You know what? These fish are just so nice and clean looking. You know? Oh yeah, gosh, you Dark can tell. Colors. Yeah, you can tell they eat really good here. Yeah. Clean nice lips and healthy. On them. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Oh gosh, did you see that one? He like just sharked it. Oh. oh. <laughs> one. That was, that's crazy. That was like in that same little area. Oh, he's getting a little bigger. Well, I thought he was tiny, tiny. <laughs> that was so cool. So that that fish there, he didn't even uh, he didn't come up and crush it like the other ones. That, that top water bite slowly going away, but he just came up and licked it. Huh? Yep. And I got him with every hook. <laughs> it never gets old, though, that's for sure. I hope it never does. Oh, no. You know what I like, too, is, you know, I don't know if I've ever been on this chain. It's just fun exploring. Oh, yeah. that I mean, that was the best part, that little bit we got out and, you know, pushed the boat over those sandbars and stuff. That was, yeah. I mean, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so we went up and down this chain, and of course, you always got to go to the farthest side away. That's just human <laughs> nature, right? Yeah. And we had to go through the tiniest bridges and tunnels and got up into some places where people probably normally don't see many boats, especially this big. And uh, <laughs> after it was all said and done, we thought, well, the best thing we found is right out in the middle of the lake. Yeah. <laughs> One of the first spots we checked. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. That's how it goes, though. I don't know how many times, oh, yeah. you know, in like tournaments. If there's a, if there's a, if, I could have a thousand acres of water to yeah. fish, but there's one acre over there yeah. that I don't know if I can get to. Right. I got to go over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this event that we're at, it's the Crestliner Dealer Meeting. We've probably got 60 dealers from across the United States and Canada. And it's an opportunity for these dealers to check out new boat models and, you know, test drive different boats, get information on different boats. And it's kind of a cool event because, you know, you get to see a lot of dealers that normally maybe don't see all that often. And, and it's just a neat opportunity, at least even for us, you know, to, to see and drive the different boats, you know. And, and for myself, you know, I live out in the upper Midwest. I live in North Dakota, predominantly walleyes. All the guiding that I did was for walleyes. I like to bass fish for fun, but can I say that I'm good at it or that I get to do it a lot? Now there's people way, way better than me. Well. When I get to fish with a guy like John Cox, who's just a, a hammer of an angler, you know, it's a it's a real joy because I get to learn a lot, and it's just fun to kind of pick his brain and watch how he does things, watch how he approaches things. I, I find that really enjoyable, and I follow the bass stuff really closely because I always feel like I would consider myself a walleye angler or maybe a multi-species angler that likes to fish for a little bit of everything, but most of the time when I'm fishing, I'm fishing for walleyes. I always feel like I can learn a lot by what's happening in the bass tournament world there's always something that i could pull from that and apply to walleye fishing and so i follow that stuff pretty closely and uh you know whether it's electronics or trends with line or presentations or just managing time i mean there's always things that you can take from other segments of the fishing world and apply it to your own world and that's one of the things i really enjoy in what I enjoy about John is that he's had some of the highest levels of success. I mean, there's been very few people that have won more tournaments or won more money fishing professional bass tournaments than John Cox. But if you were to meet him, he's the most humblest person in the world. That's kind of unusual. <laughs> you know, some of these people let some success get to their heads. And I don't think John realizes how good he is. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Got him. Got him. Uh, good fish? I don't know. <laughs> Trying to keep up with it. I that. don't know. Make a stick of cast <laughs> out there. Acting like a nicer fish. Yeah, I think he just might have a bunch of grass on him. Okay. Ah, he's not too bad. He had some grass though. Got a little bit of salad. Oh. Swapped up to the jig there. Oh gosh, All he right. barely got it. <laughs> that was cool. It's crazy how quickly they went from the top water and just completely done. Oh, like yeah. nothing. I got one. Got him. Yep. Got him. Oh, that's pretty close to a double. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh. I'll put mine in the water here. Just a nice respectable oh, yeah. fish. There we go. Oh man. 
Yeah. Yeah. We'll count it, right? Yeah. It's close enough to a double. <laughs> Good stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, these fish are just beautiful. All right. <laughs> Little school of them there. Yeah. Whoa, got him. That was awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not a bad fish. Oh, that was so cool. Oh. oh, that's a better one. Gosh, that's look how thick that one. one is. Look at that. Yeah, that's cool. Boy, he's been eating good. That's so crazy. We had, <laughs> I had three or four of them smoke it. And, and just not get it. Look, just barely got him on that one hook. Look at that. <laughs> nice fish. Good fish. Got him? Yep. Got him? Oh my <laughs> gosh, you got him. That's the one. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> That was so perfect. <laughs> yeah, this is half yours, John. Oh, no, that no. Brought no, I missed him. I, it scared me to death. I jumped so hard. Oh. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, oh here, I'm going to grab that one for you. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, come here. Come here. Oh, All right. Got him. Oh man, that, that was awesome. A, that's a beautiful fish. <laughs> man, look at that. Good stuff, man. Oh gosh. It's been a fun day. Good follow up there, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Wacky worm. <laughs> that is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful bass. Here go right. Thank you. There she goes. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> These dealer meetings are kind of fun when we can sneak away and <laughs> yeah, as long as we don't get fired yeah. this week. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else is working a lot harder and getting everything ready and cleaning and shining up boats and yeah. Don't tell anybody how much fun we're having or we're gonna get fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always a pleasure, man. Hey, I love fishing with freeze you. It. I always learn so much. Oh, yeah. just, I always have a blast. Tell you what, if you if you if you love bass fishing, you love tournament fishing, even walleye tournaments where I love following a lot of the bass stuff as far as the strategies and stuff like that, but Definitely follow and keep an eye on this guy.